Hello friends. Welcome back to the channel HVAC for you. In this video, we will discuss useful HVAC terms. These are the terms we are going to learn today. Let's start the session. First term is HVAC. HVAC stands for Heating Raising the temperature of an enclosed space for the primary purpose of ensuring the comfort of the occupants. Ventilation the process by which outdoor air is intentionally provided to a space and stale air is removed. This may be accomplished by either natural or mechanical means. Air conditioning. The process used to create and maintain certain temperature, relative humidity and air purity conditions in indoor spaces. This process is typically applied to maintain a level of personal comfort. An HVAC system takes in air cools or heats that air, and blows it into an indoor space. The three main functions of an HVAC system are interrelated, especially when providing acceptable indoor air quality and thermal comfort. Next term is Thermal comfort. It describes a person's state of mind in terms of whether they feel too hot or too cold. Factors that influence thermal comfort are Air temperature Humidity Clothing level Air velocity. Physical activity level. Thermal comfort improves. Morale. Productivity. Health and safety. People working in uncomfortably hot and cold environments are more likely to behave unsafely because their ability to make decisions and or perform manual tasks deteriorates. For example, people may take shortcuts to get out of cold environments. An employee's ability to concentrate on a given task may start to drop off, which increases the risk of errors occurring. Employees might not wear personal protective equipment properly in hot environments increasing the risks. An employer should be aware of these risks and make sure the underlying reasons for these unsafe behaviors are understood and actively discouraged and or prevented. Next term is Indoor Air Quality IAQ refers to the air quality within and around buildings and structures, especially as it relates to the health and comfort of building occupants. Understanding and controlling common pollutants indoors can help reduce your risk of indoor health concerns. Common issues associated with IAQ include Improper or inadequately maintained heating and ventilation systems Contamination by construction materials, glues, fiberglass, particle boards, paints chemicals, etc. increase in number of building occupants and time spent indoors. When indoor air is not adequate, there may be issues such as increased health issues and respiratory irritations, absenteeism and loss of productivity, strained relations between employees and employers. How to improve IAQ? The most effective way to improve indoor air quality is to eliminate individual sources of pollution or to reduce their emissions. Increase the amount of outdoor air in order to lower the concentrations of indoor air pollutants. To maintain acceptable air quality, sanitation is maintained, and water-related issues are quickly recognized and corrected. Maintaining good air quality requires effort by both the building staff and occupants. The benefits of good indoor quality are Better breathing Moisture control Fewer allergens Lower energy costs and Better sleep Next term is Sick Building Syndrome. The term Sick Building Syndrome, SPS, is used to describe situations in which building occupants experience acute health and comfort effects that appear to be linked to time spent in a building. Symptoms of Sick Building Syndrome get worse the longer you're in a particular building and get better after you leave. Possible symptoms include Headaches Blocked or runny nose Dry, itchy skin Dry, sore eyes or throat. Cough or wheezing. Rashes. Causes of sick building syndrome. Inadequate ventilation. Chemical contaminants from indoor sources. Chemical contaminants from outdoor sources. Biological contaminants. How to deal with the symptoms of SPS. Open windows to improve ventilation, if you can take regular screen breaks if you use a computer. Go outside for some fresh air during lunchtime and other breaks. Moving to the next. Building-related illness. 
The term building-related illness, BRI, is used when symptoms of diagnosable illness are identified and can be attributed directly to airborne building contaminants. Building-related illnesses are caused by exposure to substances within airtight buildings that have poor ventilation. Symptoms vary depending on the cause but may include fever, difficulty breathing, runny nose or congestion, headaches, skin problems, and difficulty concentrating. Diagnosis usually includes evaluating the air quality of the building and determining how many people experience building-related symptoms. Treatment is usually removal from the building or improvement of air quality within the building. Next term is Heat The transfer of energy from one body to another as the result of a difference in temperature is called heat. If two bodies at different temperatures are brought together, energy is transferred that is heat flows from the hotter body to the colder. The effect of this transfer of energy usually, but not always, is an increase in the temperature of the colder body and a decrease in the temperature of the hotter body. The next term is Conduction Conduction is the mode of heat transfer in which heat energy is transmitted due to collisions between neighboring atoms or molecules. Conduction occurs more readily in solids and liquids, where the particles are closer together than in gases, where particles are further apart. Example Next term is Convection Convection is the mode of heat transfer in which heat is transferred by movement of a heated fluid such as air or water. Convection happens in liquids and gases. Example Next term is Radiation. Radiation is the mode of heat transfer in which heat transfer takes place in the form of electromagnetic waves. Example Next term is Sensible heat. Sensible heat is the heat which can be felt and this type of heat can be measured by a thermometer because its increase or decrease causes a variable change in temperature. Sensible heat is related to changes in temperature of a gas or object with no change in phase. Example Feeling the warmth emitting from the fireplace on a winter day. Next term is Latent heat. Latent heat is the heat required for an object to change phase, melt, boil, freeze, etc. Latent heat is related to changes in phase between liquids, gases, and solids. Example Change in latent heat causes the air around us to become warmer or cooler. Latent heat causes air to move around and cause wind and vertical movements of air. Next term is Duct sizing. Duct systems are designed to properly distribute air throughout a building. If ducts that are not well designed result in discomfort, high energy costs, bad air quality, and increased noise levels, choosing the right size duct is critical to maintain proper air flow in the system. For duct sizing, various methods are used. For manual duct sizing, ductilator is used. McKee duct sizer is the most widely used and any of the following methods employed to calculate the right size of the duct. Equal friction method. Velocity reduction method. Static regain method. Next term is. Aspect ratio. It is defined as the ratio of long side to the short side of a rectangular duct. Aspect ratio is the major factor which influences initial and running cost of a duct. As air increases. The heat gain by duct also increases. If AR increases for the fixed duct area and capacity, the weight of duct material and weight of insulation also increases. Next term is Heat load calculation. Heat in buildings can come from internal sources such as electrical appliances, or from external sources such as the sun. A heat load calculation considers all sources present and determines their total effect. To properly size a space cooling system, first we must know the amount of heat that must be removed. This is precisely the purpose of heat load calculation. Heat load calculation stands for figuring out the right amount of heat load for a specific enclosure, while heat load refers to the amount of heat needed to keep an enclosure within the desired temperature range. Next term is CFM. In HVAC, CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. It is a standard unit of airflow volume. It tells you the volume of air that is being moved by an HVAC device every minute. CFM determines how much cubic feet can be moved or exchanged each minute. 
A room measuring 1,000 cubic feet would need a 1,000 CFM system to replace all the air each minute. Next term is air changes per hour. Air changes per hour refers to how many times per hour the entire volume of air in a given space is replaced with supply and or recirculated air. It is also sometimes referred to as air change rate or air exchange rate. Air changes per hour is a vitally important measurement for gauging how effective indoor air is exchanged or filtered. Next term is Ambient temperature Ambient temperature is usually the room temperature or the temperature of the air surrounding equipment under consideration such as a computer or power supply unit. Ambient temperature in a room is influenced by factors such as the weather, humidity, room insulation, equipment, people inside the room cooling systems, heating systems, and other factors. Next term is Infiltration The unintentional and uncontrolled entry of outdoor air into an enclosed space is called infiltration air. Infiltration occurs through cracks in the building envelope and due to pressure differences between inside and outside. Infiltration rates vary throughout the year. It is greater in winter when the temperature difference between inside and outside is greater. Next term is Exfiltration. The flow of indoor air from an enclosed building space to the outdoors is called exfiltration air. Commercial air-conditioned buildings are designed to be airtight, the windows cannot be opened, and pressurized. In summer the air inside is colder, air-conditioned, and therefore denser, heavier, than the hotter air outside. The natural air flow direction is therefore from inside to outside. Since commercial buildings are pressurized, the airflow leakage is from the inside to the outside. Exfiltration amount is small and usually neglected in HVAC calculations. Next term is Bypass factor. Bypass factor is part of the total air through the coil which fails to come into contact with the surface of the cooling coil. It depends on number of rows of coil, air velocity and fins. Higher the number of rows, lower the bypass factor and vice versa. Higher velocity, higher bypass factor and vice versa. The velocity should not be too high, otherwise huge amount of air will get past the coil without having enough heat transfer due to the short contact time. Next term is Contact factor. Contact factor is the part of the total air through the coil which comes into contact with the surface of the cooling coil. Next term is Apparatus dew point. ADP is the effective surface temperature of the cooling coil. It is also the temperature at a fixed flow rate at which both sensible and latent heat gains are removed from the conditioned space at the required rates. It is also often called as the coil temperature. Next term is shading coefficient. It is the ratio of solar gain due to direct sunlight. Passing through a glass unit to the solar energy which passes through 3 mm clear float glass. It is an indicator of how well the glass is thermally insulating, shading, the interior when there is direct sunlight on the panel or window. Next term is Sensible heat factor. Sensible heat factor is the ratio of sensible heat to total heat, where total heat is the sum of sensible and latent heat. Next term is Ozone depletion potential. The capacity of a refrigerant to destroy the ozone layer is called ozone depletion potential. To determine the value of ODP of various refrigerants, R11 refrigerant is considered as a reference and has a sign value of ODP as 1. If any refrigerant has ODP value less than 1, it is less hazardous to ozone layer and if it has ODP value more than 1, then it is considered more hazardous to ozone layer and environment. Next term is Global warming potential. It is found that refrigerants used in an AC unit contribute to global warming to a more or less extent. GWP is the measurement of how much effect a refrigerant will have on global warming with reference to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is used as reference for defining GWP value and assign GWP as 1. If a refrigerant has GWP value less than 1, it is environmental friendly while that more than one is hazardous to environment. Now we will see some practice questions. Question 1. Dash 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 describes a person's state of mind in terms of whether they feel too hot or too cold. Option A. Indoor air quality. 
Option B. Humidity. Option C. Thermal comfort. Option D. Air temperature. Correct answer is. Option C. Thermal comfort. Question 2. Latent heat is related to changes in phase between liquids, gases, and solids. Option A. True. Option B. False. Correct answer is. Option A. True. Question 3. Which of the following mode of heat transfer takes place in the form of electromagnetic waves? Option A. Conduction. Option B. Convection. Option C. Radiation. Option D. None. Correct answer is. Option C. Radiation. Question 4. Aspect ratio can be defined as. Option A. Ratio of long side to the short side of a rectangular duct. Option B. Ratio of short side to the long side of a rectangular duct. Option C. Ratio of the area to the short side of a rectangular duct. Option D. Ratio of the perimeter to the short side of a rectangular duct. Correct answer is. Option A. Ratio of long side to the short side of a rectangular duct. Question 5. The entry of outside air through wall cracks, door gaps into an enclosed space is called. Option A. Exfiltration. Option B. Infiltration. Option C. ADP. Correct answer is. Option B. Infiltration. This was all about HVAC terms. In the next part of this video, we will see more important terms. If you have any queries or suggestion, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you for watching the video.